after the 26-year wait for the English League Championship. The ensuing years brought a stream of trophies, and in 1999, something truly unique was achieved. A treble of domestic league, FA Cup, and Champions League triumphs was completed in a single, unforgettable season. Alec Ferguson's management had given a club steeped in tradition, a team that blended experience and youth, skill and resilience, and a team that would never ever give up. Just days after missing out on the 1992 league title, 14,000 fans arrived at Old Trafford to watch the Youth Cup being won against Crystal Palace. And if the significance of this success was not immediately obvious, it would soon become glaringly so. We will see uh, within the club, these are potentially top young players coming through with uh, Neville's, Beckham, Butt scores. We had some really, really fantastic players at the time. Under youth team coach Eric Harrison, a special group was emerging. Alec Ferguson saw the huge potential. As soon as first team had stopped training, he used to come over. So he knew just as much about the players as I did, really. But we had many discussions about it. And he got to the stage at one time when he said, well, if this lot don't make it, we might as well pack in. If you're a young player growing up and you're in the youth team and you see the manager of Manchester United watching you and taking an interest, it spurs you on, it gives you that sort of belief that you can get in the first team. Ryan Giggs had done exactly that. After captaining the 1992 winners of the Youth Cup, in the following year he helped the first team to end that 26-year wait for the league title. Then there was a league and cup double in 1994. Alec Ferguson had built his first great United side. We were at good ages from 26 upwards. And you're Ryan Giggs, who was a young lad, of course. Uh, Conchelsis was good reason we were young. All the rest were good, good ages for a team. And they were very strong mentally. The likes of Paul Ince, Brian Robson, Steve Bruce, Mark Hughes, tough characters. Not many teams had more pace than us, like some me. Uh, Kon Konchelskis, Lee Sharp, really quick players. We, we just had everything. We just had uh, strength, aggression, pace, skill. Sometimes we just blow teams away. There was also a Frenchman, an inspiration, a catalyst, Eric Cantona. He was fantastic. Scoring important goals or making important goals, he was just terrific at it. He was a charismatic figure for the players. I think that for all the young players, he was a great example. He was like the Pied Piper with him, you know, they were like that, you know, goggle-eyed him, but uh, he, he was terrific with him, you know. The first day in training, I remember, behind one of the goals, was, there was a big wall. He went down to that wall, this is like 20 minutes before we, we were supposed to start training, took a ball, just, you know, half while he was up against, the, and, you know, touch it down, and then and the next day, you know, one of the young fellas was there, and then suddenly everyone was out there, the Skulls, the, 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 the Beckhams, the Nevilles, who eventually went on to become the backbone of Manchester United. In 1995, the kids would get their chance. We lost Paul Ince, we lost Mark Hughes and Kanchelskis. Those were three players that would play in every starting 11. For those young guys to come in and do what they did, Neville, Scholes, they were unbelievable. It's sometimes a gamble when you, you put young players in. You see so many players with the skill, but you've got to have that mental ability as well, and I knew because I played with them for five or six years, the strengths that these players had, the mental strength, the skill that they had, um, I knew that they would be able to cope. They did more than cope. United won another league and cup double in 1996. The 96 team was starting to evolve with the younger players coming in, Gary Neville, Phil Neville, David Beckham, Nicky Butt, Paul Scholes all start to emerge in the team. The spirit was incredible in the dressing room. There was, you know, the young lads that came through together. We were the heart of that sort of driving force behind that spirit. It was just the start of a team, and of course, by '99, all these young players were uh, regular players. 
We were the voice of the changing room at the time. You know, at that age, we were 23, 24. We were confident. We were, we'd won leagues, we'd won cups, we'd won doubles. 1998 had seen the title surrendered to Arsenal. At the start of the new season, United reacted, adding two vital signings, Yap Stam and Dwight York. The expectation and the quality within the dressing room, certainly the leadership of Sir Alex and Gaffer, and I knew straight away this was the place for me to be. The day that I joined, Keno pretty much drove a ball at me and says, you know, welcome to United. We had a good mix of players. Big Pete was a big personality. Yak was tough. He was quick. He was a fantastic man marker. He was made for the, the British game. Ronnie Johnson next to him was so quick as well. We could gamble at times and going forward and, and leave them two centre halves, 2v2, which is always dangerous. And that, but that's, that's the way we played at the time. The best midfield you could ever wish to have. We had great ability, great ability in that area of the field, that final third. Bex is crossing, you know, Scholes, he was such a fantastic footballer. Keeney was powerful, Giggs, he's dribbling. Even Nicky Butt, not to mention, absolutely brilliant midfield, four great strikers. Yorkie and Teddy were great link-up players as well. And obviously, Ollie and Coley were known for the goal-scoring feats and that, so there was a great balance and great composure that final third. Four strikers, but two in particular formed a potent partnership. <sighs> Special. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. He invited me to, into his home, his family home, showed me the areas to go, the areas not to go. Since then, our partnership has really blossomed from there. I didn't make my appearance with York until we played Southampton at the Dell. And then after that, it was just unbelievable. The way, the way me and your kid just clicked on that day, because people say, oh, did you work on it? Never worked on it. We clicked on that day, and then after that, as I say, the rest is history. The york Cole combination was needed against Champions League group opponents, Bronby, Barcelona, and Bayern Munich. You know, sometimes in life, things are just meant to be. Little dummies, little one-twos, and someone, one of us get in and score. The Bromby game, you know, little dummies as well. He slips me and I think the goalkeeper. We got better as the season progressed. And the more we play with each other, we, we get an understanding there. People say it was a telepathic sort of combination. We were delighted to get through the group because 98, when we went out to Monaco, 97, we felt we had a great chance and went out to Dortmund in the semi final. That was a big blow. So to get through the group stage was the the first step along the way. Domestically, the great form continued. By mid-January, United were second in the league and through to the fourth round of the FA Cup, where they met old rivals Liverpool. We wanted to play football. They certainly wanted to play football. There always seems to be lots of space on the pitch when you play Manchester United, likewise for them. And they would always attack minds and games with goals and excitement. Good-looking move this by Liverpool. Fowler and Owen both waiting. Here's the cross, and Owen has done it! for Liverpool with only two and a half minutes on the clock. That was an incredible game that, you know, um, we see it seemingly in complete control and then at the time United were, um, were popping up with late goals. We just grew and grew in performances. I think confidence grew. We, we felt we were invincible. Beckham. Up stop to shoot and there's the equaliser from Dwight York. We still felt now we're going to win this game and we'll get that goal we need to at the end. All skulls. And it's 2 1. Oh, Manchester United have stolen it with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Maybe a warning of what could happen later on. A week later, this time in the league, there was more late drama. I remember the, the Charlton game. We were really pressing them, we were all over them, and we just couldn't get the ball in the net. Pretty much on the last kick of the ball, I think Scores would deliver one and I rise above the defender and, and got the header in. Again, that was important for us, kept our momentum going. The following month at Nottingham Forest, United delivered a statement of intent. Overseeing a 4-1 lead with 20 minutes remaining, Ferguson had simple instructions for his super sub. You get the last 20 minutes here, just come on, nothing stupid, keep it nice and simple and keep possession. But then chances just fell for me, so we ended up scoring four goals. It was one of them feelings that when you go to the playground, the ball just lands in your feet, you score. I had one of them feelings then, just, I, was, I was going to score every time I touched it. 
March saw a return to the Champions League and the quarterfinals had thrown up difficult opponents. They always said you had to beat an Italian side in those days to, to win a, a Champions League. And the Inter Milan were sprinkled with fantastic players. But for United, it was a night for their stars to shine. Bex is a winner, he's a leader. He's proven that on a number of occasions. The Inter game was just something that, you know, things in, you know, the crosses that he had provided for me on the night made my life extremely easy. And I, you know, when you look back, lots of my goals have come from because of the quality of X. Big Pete made a great save from Zamorano, I think, and Berg made a fantastic clearance off the line. We went there with a 2-0 lead, which is, is fantastic, really, because you would hope that's enough to get you through. That was a tough test because the San Siro is it's a fantastic place to play football. They scored in the second half and we were hanging on a bit. And Scholes, he scored in the last few minutes. I'm delighted to get through to the semi-final. Manchester United were striving for glory on three fronts. No English team had won the league and FA Cup and been European champions in the same season. But within the club, talk of a treble was banned. Never. <laughs> You dismiss it, um, certainly in January and February, is, is too much. If people really spoke about it too much, you can't like get shot down, you know. Not, not in a bad way, but it's a case of, hey, there's plenty more games to go, you never know what can happen. Tough tests did lie ahead. In the Champions League semi-final first leg, only a Ryan Giggs goal in the dying seconds salvaged a 1-1 draw. And there would be no respite before the return leg in Turin. United first met Arsenal in the semi-final of the FA Cup. That was a very, very good Arsenal team. The midfield there was very strong. The back four, the goalkeeper. Maybe in a different era, Arsenal might have dominated. You know, but unfortunately they've come against, come into the wrong era where Manchester United were an unbelievable team. We had some mammoth games with them. A nil-nil draw meant a replay was required. The second game, I made a lot of changes. People don't remember that. I used my whole pool because we did Wednesday game against Juventus. And I felt, we've got to use the pool here. I left out York and Cole. I left out Giggs. I left out Scholes. And we started off really well in the game. First blood to Manchester United! The match swung back and forth. He's off! <laughs> oh, what a game! Before penalty drama in injury time. I told you they needed Schmeichel, and they did! I didn't know it was the last minute, and I was very surprised when, when it was finished. I'm thinking, wow, had they scored, we would never have had the time. When Peter saves that penalty, that just shows you this is going to be your year if Dennis Bergkamp scores. They would have the mental advantage probably going on to win the league. But then when he saved that one, we, um, we had that uh, little edge. It created one of the best and most memorable moments of maybe Manchester United history. I was having a bit of a nightmare, actually. I kept giving it away. So I decided the next time I got the ball, I was just going to dribble and see what happened. Great run here by Ryan Giggs. Oh, what a goal! Would you believe it? I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest with you. But when he started running at them, I'm going, God, God. They're watching each huddle, the horse cups, each huddle, go over that one, go over that one. You know, it got to a position where you say, hey, he could score here. And the celebrations, don't forget them. <laughs> Fantastic goal. And you just felt the fate was in our hand by that time. I think it gave everyone that lift and everyone that belief that we could go on and do something special that season. That belief was essential as United travelled to Turin to the Champions League semi-final, second leg. Everybody wrote us off because you know, nobody went to Juventus and, and won. It was the worst possible start. After just 11 minutes, United trailed 2-0. But the response was characteristically defiant. Unbelievable performance. You know, to go 2 0 down, I don't think any team would ever want to win, well, English team. For us to 
pick ourselves up, dust ourselves down. Roy gets us back in the game with a header. But a yellow card for Roy Keane meant that if United qualified, their captain would miss the final. He was just immense in that game and he, he spurred everyone on. Uh, because suddenly now if we score, we're through. And we got two in before half time and they panicked. We were a better team after that. Throughout that game, I don't think we ever believed we were going to lose. Coming out second half, we played like men possessed. We got a winning goal from Coley. It was a great moment because we'd been in the semi-finals and always felt a bit unlucky. But to get there that night was fantastic. A lot was labelled out that team after saying the strength of the team, the character of the team, everything. Is the treble on now? <laughs> <laughs> we knew before the match that uh, Booking would uh, have missed the final. It doesn't really matter. That United got there, that's the most important. Proud, proud moment for me. My players are absolutely fantastic. Absolutely never seen. <laughs> Camaraderie was, was massive, not just on the football pitch, but off the football pitch. Roy decided to call a team meeting, as we used to call them then. And we used to go out for a bite to eat and a few drinks. We used to address our problems then and forget about it the next day in training. You know what I mean? There was something so special about the, that team. The bond was absolutely unbelievable. Basic to that bond were the players who'd spent the best part of their lives at the club. They've grown up together, so it really meant uh, a lot to them to do it together. They could pick each other in training so badly. The fierce rivalry was there, but then when they got to a game, we felt that these young kids were the spirit of the, of the team. We got into the rhythm of playing, uh, resting, recovering, preparing, playing. And the more we won, we felt more or less invincible. The last 10 days of the season would decide everything. United had to beat Tottenham Hotspur on the final day to ensure the league title. We had four centre-fours who could play with each other at any given time. And the managers made the decision to leave me out, so I had to take it on the chin as you do. To see us go, go down to Tottenham, and we all saying to ourselves, oh, mate, this has got to be our day. And then Bex gets us back in the game, makes us 1-1. I was fortunate enough to be brought on at half time by the manager and with my first touch, I've ended up lobbying Ian Walker to win it the last game of the season and to win it at Old Trafford. You can't ask for much more than that. One trophy down and two to go. Six days later, Manchester United faced Newcastle United in the FA Cup final. It was a very easy final. I think when such a, a run by that time, the momentum had just got, was bigger and bigger, you know, and. I think it was always going to be a win winner. Andy Cole, good play by him. Here's Sheringham. That was deeply dark too, and it scores. Starting it on to Sheringham! That's Sheringham to score! United's two trophies down and one to go. The last stop on the quest for the treble was a trip to Barcelona's new camp to meet Bayern Munich in the Champions League final. Concord. Wow. I've never been on Concord before. Get there. And uh, it was very we were very chilled out. Very chilled out leading up to the game. The Tuesday night was one of the toughest night's sleeps ever. Come down in the morning and all the boys were saying, how'd you sleep? Like, I couldn't sleep a wink. No one could sleep a wink, you know, because we'd never been there before. Uh, we're still a very young team, you know, and no one had ever been to a European Cup final, so we never knew what to expect. The Premier League is so tough and such a marathon that I think any English team, when they reach a European Cup final, are actually very, very tired and um, we were no different. Manchester United's football is near perfection this year. Surely, Lurby is going to sport it all for them now. Unfortunately, the managers had to change the team around a bit because Slozy and Keeney were missing. You know, Jesper came in on, on the left, I think. Butty came in in the middle of the park. I think Giggsy went across on the right. So, you, you know, you're upsetting the balance of, of, of what is a fantastic football inside. One 
nil down. I think it was important what the manager said at half time. He talks about walking past that trophy and not being able to touch it if we've lost. So we need to give it all as we as we always do. I think you know, them words sort of spurred us on for the second half. Ferguson sent on Teddy Sheringham after 67 minutes, but still the German side, though obviously tiring, remained ahead. Delicious shit hits the post and bounces straight back into the hands of Peter Schmeichel. They were in control, dominated with the crossbar, but I mean, had some great chances. But you feel if they don't score here, we, we can still have a chance. And that's one of the things that the gaffer always used to say, that always hang in there, always take something out of the game. On 81 minutes, it was time for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's entrance. I cannot remember what he said. I just, he probably didn't say anything. He just go out there and try to get a goal or something. I can't remember, because I was that focused to, When's he going to put me on? When's he going to put me on? 90 minutes played, still trailing 1 0. For United, it was now or never. My favourite goal is and will always be the equalising goal in the Champions League final because that gave us a shot. In towards Michael, it's come for Dwight York. Clear, Gates with a shot, Jerry! Two minutes later, Solskjaer won another corner. Up step Beckham once again. I had a great feeling that day that something big was going to happen to me. My uh, best friend, who um, is a nurse, he, uh, he had a night shift that night. So I spoke to him earlier on and asked him if he was going to watch the game. Yeah, but he had to go before the game was finished because he had to start his night shift. And then. Uh, I made sure to tell him, no, make sure you get someone to fill in for you, because something big is going to happen to me tonight. Beckham, into Sheringham, and Solskjaer has done it! Just instinct, I never practiced that finish, it was just my lucky day. It was probably my best moment ever on a football pitch, thinking we're going to lose this to pure ecstasy. From feeling like we'd reached the top, we came crashing down, all the way to the bottom. We had to watch Manchester United celebrate, we had to watch them lift the trophy. I congratulated Alex Ferguson on winning, but I was so disappointed. Inside, I was just devastated. Two manic minutes have turned the match on its head, improbably, almost unbelievably, Manchester United were European champions and the treble was complete. We just refused to give in and we, we risked to try and get it back in the match and if you risk you deserve something. It had been a magical ten days and the homecoming was merely affirmation. It was nearly a million people. It's refreshing to know that I was part of that uh, memorable moment. Well, it's just a fairy tale also in itself because to achieve it, no one will do it again. But if someone is going to do it with us, it can be done again. But it does take some doing. But we did. And I think it's true more of the ability of the fact that we could score goals because. You know, we were strong defensively, but I think we were such an attack-minded side. I'm very, very biased. I'm very biased. If your team wins the trouble, you're the best team. Camaraderie, the way we stuck together, I think that says a hell of a lot for a football team, so I'd like to believe that um, that team was the best team. If you could say to me, bring 10 days back and live it again, they would be the 10 days in my life that I would. Every time I speak about those 10 days and think about it, I get goosebumps just thinking about the moments, the special times, the achievement of everything coming together perfectly in one season to do what we did. Since 1999, Manchester United, managed by Sir Alec Ferguson, have continued to win trophies year after year, and in 2008, they became European champions for a third time. The 2018, you know, Giggs, goals, Rooney, Ronaldo, Tevez, Vidic, Ferdinand, Evra, Wes Brown at right back, Van der Sar in there. That was a special, special team that had everything. But what you'll never change is the spirit of 99.
the way we won it. I think inspired many Man United players and it's in the tradition of Man United doing it that way. Just never give in. I can't tell you how many matches we've won in, uh, in, uh, in added on time, but it's a lot. We well, scored in the last minute too many times for the PM to be an accident. What it did tell you about Manchester United was that they had an indomitable spirit of never giving in and chasing right to the wire to try and achieve a result. That is not an accident, that's the character of the team, that's the personality of the team. And, uh, you know, because of that, they deserve to win it.